President Xi's visit to Russia and his meeting with uh, uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia. What China and Russia are up to? Is this a new axis of, of power emerging to counter US hegemony? There are two things that China wants. Number one, China is actually happy to see Russia weak. What does Russia need right now? Is militarily uh, in a bind in Ukraine. Is China going to provide weapons to Russia? Uh, I seriously doubt that. China's power and its influence is on the rise. I don't think China is going to play any role because, uh, you know, one belt, one road, BRI, it, it has failed. If you just look at CPEC, it's a disaster in Pakistan. It hasn't produced the results. Hello and welcome back. Um, I have uh, Mr. Kamran Bukhari with me once again, who's a director at the New Lines Institute in Washington, D.C., and a noted author, uh, analyst uh, with a varied experience in uh, all regions, actually, but more so these days, he's most uh, focused on Asia. And uh, Kamran, uh, welcome back and thank you for, the, for your time. Uh, I quickly wanted to discuss with you uh, the, in the aftermath of uh, President Xi's visit to Russia and his meeting with uh, uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia and all the speculation that has uh, followed this, uh, this visit and lots of, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, speculation as to what China and Russia are up to. Is this a new axis of, of power emerging to counter US hegemony uh, on, on the global stage? And uh, so uh, tell me how important was this visit uh, by President Xi, especially when Putin has been isolated uh, and stands, uh, uh, you know, the prospect of facing a trial uh, by the UN's um, International uh, uh, Criminal Court of Justice. So uh, what do you think uh, uh, this signified? If you look at it from the point of view of China, there are two things that China wants vis-a-vis -vis Russia. Number one, China is actually happy to see Russia weaken. Hmm. Because the more China weakens, the more, I'm sorry, the more Russia weakens, the more space there is for China to expand its influence, particularly in Eurasia. Uh, Central Asia, as you know, has long been uh, Moscow's sphere of influence. And, and long before the Ukraine war, uh, we saw the Russian footprint receding uh, and, the, and the Chinese advancing. There's a great book on this by Daniel Markey from uh, USIP. So that's one. Uh, so uh, uh, that is sort of the long-term, if you will, interest of China. But at the same time, if they can somehow use, I mean, I mean they mean by they I mean Chinese, the the Russia's war in Ukraine to cause grief and problems for the United States, they'll certainly do that. Uh, and that's exactly what this entire trip is about. It's more info ops than anything substantive. Uh, I mean, and what do I mean by that? Uh, basically, look, what what does Russia need right now? Russia, uh, you know, has is militarily uh, in a bind in Ukraine. So the question is, is China going to provide weapons to Russia? Uh, I seriously doubt that. I, I don't think that the Chinese will go that far. And if that's the case, then... Uh, what else can China give to Russia? Diplomatic support? Sure, you know, uh, but what is it worth? In the end, there isn't much that China can do for Russia to help Russia in its, you know, uh, hour of need. The mm. need is in Ukraine. It's not anywhere else. Yeah. So on that very point, I mean, you know, one of the uh, things I read in the media and some people have been talking about it as the Chinese uh, influence or efforts to uh, be, be the mediator, to find some kind of a resolution to the Ukraine war, uh, you know, by prevailing over Russia and intervening. Do you think the Chinese can play that role, uh, um, Kamran? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I'll uh, defer to what you say. <laughs> So if I'm Putin, which I'm thankfully not, <laughs> but let's say I was, 
uh, why would I go to China when I know China can't deliver on Ukraine? Mm. China isn't the, the one creating my problem in Ukraine. It's mm-hmm. the West. It's Europe and primarily the United States. So it doesn't make any sense for Putin to say to Xi, hey, can you mediate? I mean, there are many, many channels going back to the days of the Cold War between Washington and and Moscow. There is no need for Beijing to step in from a purely Russian point of view. Uh, What is it that China can do? Make statements? Um, call for an end to the res- uh, you know conflict. Uh, I'm still not over that you know dog and pony show uh, in Beijing involving the Iranian uh, uh, national security uh, chief and his Saudi counterpart. So that even that is neither here nor there. This is too big for China, and quite frankly, uh, if there's going to be a peaceful settlement, uh, then the Americans and the Russians have to get together and agree on something, which then needs to be implemented. And it's only the United States that can influence the government of President Zelensky. Putin knows that. And why would Putin subordinate his foreign policy to President Xi? You know, it just doesn't make sense. Yes. So, okay. I mean, but but you would recognize, Kamran, that China's power and its influence is on the rise. I mean, uh, whether it's economic clout, it's trading uh, status globally, and the fact that it is becoming more and more assertive after decades of uh, inward looking uh, policies focused on internal economy, and I suppose political uh, sort of uh, settlements within the Chinese uh, territories, uh, it is now Uh, kind of looking outwards, you know, with the OBOR and other uh, instruments, uh, China is all set to play a major role uh, on the world stage. And what does this spell for the United States uh, status as the sole superpower as we speak? I don't think China is going to play any role because, uh, you know, one belt, one road, BRI, it, it has failed. Uh, It hasn't worked out. Are you sure it has failed, Kamran? How? It has failed because if you just look at CPEC, it's a disaster in Pakistan. It hasn't produced the results. The Chinese have invested a lot of money. Uh, It's very well known around the world that China has indebted many nations, not just Pakistan, but, you know, countries in Africa. Look at what happened in Sri Lanka. Uh, So China has thrown cash around. China has provided a lot of debt to a lot of countries, but those th- that money, that investment hasn't produced influence, has not been able to provide the Chinese. There's no, that return on investment is still not coming. And, and I don't think it will. Uh, as for, does China want to play a major role? Yes. Does China want, uh, is China increasing its footprint in international organizations? Yes. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, clout is, as much as you can either do it in a coercive way, which China does not have the means to do it, or uh, the world is willing to do business with you. If you just look at the Western Pacific, every single country, save North Korea, uh, is opposed to China you know, uh, influencing their, uh, their countries. Whether you go to Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, uh, even Vietnam. Uh, and 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 Southeast Asian countries. In fact, the there's a survey out, uh, and I forget who is it from, and I, I, I it it basically says that people in Southeast Asia look upon India more favorably than China. But then Samuel, you, that's a that's a very U.S. centric uh, view that you're giving uh, about uh, India playing because because I don't really see India playing that role. Given uh, India's economic uh, clout and status, and even its military power is far, far inferior to China. Would you not agree to that? Oh, I agree with that. I was just giving you a a public opinion survey. Yeah. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Okay. I'm just saying that people in 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 China's immediate geopolitical neighborhood do not look favorably on China, and everything else is a, a bridge too far. 
Right. And so I, I think there is a need to sort of really realize that, yes, China uh, is the second largest economy of the world, uh, but at the same time, it does not have that influence. And it's not going to get that influence because China is seen as a predatory actor by those countries who are uh, who it could potentially influence. Now, of course, you know, there's Pakistan and its relationship uh, with China. Uh, but even that isn't panning out. And if you look at how, you know, Pakistan's situation right now, I don't see the Chinese leaping at the opportunity to come out and bail out Pakistan. Uh, I think I want to discuss this in much detail because these days there's a big, big media circus going on that Pakistan has to take some decisions, but we'll come to that later. Let's go back to Xi and Putin. And I do you foresee that if, uh, suppose, I mean, there's no sign of Ukraine war ending anytime soon, but assuming that it does, uh, would you would you uh, agree with this view that uh, China Russia axis is going to be a power block to reckon with in the coming years? Well, if if th- that was happening, uh, Mr. Putin would not have the problems that he has in Ukraine. If he cannot pacify Ukraine militarily, I don't see what that power block looks like. Uh, yeah. What I do see happening. And, and 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 this is something that's been in the works for a while, and now you see cartoons and memes on it as well, is I think that uh, China is definitely uh, becoming a much bigger player than Russia, with the caveat that China doesn't have the military industrial complex that the Russians do. Hmm. Uh, so financially, from a pure financial point of view, and from a sheer point of view of being able to project influence and power, excuse me, because of being the planet's industrial house, uh, obviously China has overtaken Russia. So I think that is far more of an important development geopolitically than any talk of a power block. Uh, and and mind you, you know, uh, as I said earlier, China, it's in China's interest to not uh, to basically take advantage of Russia's weakening. And so China wants to be uh, in competition with the U.S. China does not want second place, uh, I mean, third place, or want to, uh, you know, partner. Now, if Russia were to be able to help China, which I don't think uh, President Xi is under any illusion, he realizes what's going on, uh, then, you know, it might be good. But that's not happening. So there's no block. But what I do see is China overtaking Russia uh, but with the caveat that they do not have, at this point in time, the military heft that the Russians have. Right, right. Got it. Uh, so, Kamran, I, there's so much to, uh, you know, talk about and picking up some of your, uh, the threads of uh, what you just said. But I think I'll uh, wait for the next opportunity when we talk and we'll continue because this is an ongoing conversation. It's a changing situation. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, viewers, I hope you like uh, our video presentation. Please do give us your comments and your feedback on this and do share the video if you like it. Thank you.